G'day, how are you? Uh, Dean here, and today I'm bringing you a review of a geared head. This is the GH Pro 2 by Sunway Photo. Okay, um, let's get going. Just let me start with telling you a little bit about geared heads and the advantage over a traditional ball head, okay? So look, the main, the main difference is that with a geared head, we've got our two axes, fore and aft, and our leveling axis on a, on a geared, like on a gear. So we can make really fine, precise movements to that one axis only. If we wanna just come forward a little bit, we come forward. Or if we wanna come back, we come back. We're not changing this other axis. So the issues with a ball head, I'll just chuck this camera on here and I'll show you is that to make those fine movements, it can be really difficult sometimes and quite frustrating. So if we want to um, just make our, see, and this one's quite sort of jerky. So if I want to just make a small movement, I just want to come forward, we may come too far, or we might not go enough. And so we're sort of dicking around doing these little movements, trying to get it right. And the other thing is you might come forward and by coming forward, you, you throw the level off. So it can be very, very frustrating. Um, quite different on a geared head, and this is where the geared heads really, really excel. So with those, you can just make those fine movements very, very easy, and it's a great tool for fine tuning your compositions and getting your compositions perfect. Now, I'll just show you um, just a comparison to another geared head. So I've used geared heads for a lot of years now. Um, I found them a long, long time ago and I've never gone back to a traditional ball head. So this was the original ones that I used. They're a Manfrotto 410. Um, they were a great head, but there were a couple of things that used to sort of annoy me. One was that this gearing at the top was really, really stiff. And it always seemed to be right in the spot that you used it all the time. Um, they did wear out very quickly. So I've got a shelf full of these things. Um, the other thing is that you see your pivot point here where it sits on your tripod. So when that's on your tripod here and you've got your, your sort of pivot point through here, the camera's not center, it's off center. So if you're shooting panos or you want to pan, as you pan, it's actually moving, the camera's moving forward off the center of your pivot point where you've set your tripod up. So that was sort of a little bit frustrating as well. The other thing is with, with this Manfrotto one is that that's the plate, okay? So a massive plate, if you're using a small camera, a little bit of overkill. Um, and the other thing is you couldn't run an L bracket because, it, because of that plate. You actually can run an L bracket. I ended up retrofitting one of these to allow an L bracket to go on, but it doesn't go on without making a modification. So that's the difference with this one here. Um, I really love this design because, as you can see, it's very central overhead. So as you're pivoting through here, it's exactly where it should be. Now, a quick little comparison before I get into this one, just showing you the previous model. So GH Pro 2, this is the, um, the GH 2017 model. So they have changed a couple of things. You can see it sits a little bit higher um, they've changed the whole shape and design here, and they've got rid of these knobs here. Okay, so these ones here, you used to undo those to make your big movement. Okay, so they'd make your big movement, and you'd get that roughly where you want it, and then you would lock that off, and then you would um, use your gear to make your, your fine movements. Um, that's about, oh, the only other thing is I've changed the position of this, which I'll tell you later when I go through panos. So with this one, they, um, they've got rid of these knobs and they've put in a wheel, which I'll show you how that works as well. So that's the main difference. A um, little bit of difference in weight, even though this one, I thought this was gonna be a bit lighter, but this is a little bit heavier. These are 850 grams or just under. So it's still well, well under a kilo. These things were um, about a kilo, I think. So quite a bit, 
quite a bit smaller and definitely less weight and less bulky. Okay, so that's the main differences. Now, let's get into this guy and I'll tell you all about him. Just let me put him on this little dinky tabletop tripod so I can show you properly. First, let's do a little bit of a quick unboxing. Bit boring, but um, got to do that. So, it comes really nicely boxed. You get your bag of bits, your Allen keys. Um, you do get a, a reducing bush here, just in case the just in case um, that is not three eighth on your tripod. You get a reducing bush to bush it down to a quarter. Uh, a cleaning cloth. You get a nice little bag, which is actually pretty handy. You probably should uh, should use this all the time, even when it's on your tripod. You know, just keep that over there, keep all the dust and dirt off of it, keep it nice and clean. So it's a pretty heavy duty neoprene material too, which I really like. And of course, you get a quick release plate. So standard Arca Swiss release plate. Um, so that's it. That's all the bits that you get. Let me just show you that plate now. I'll do the plate first and then I'll go through and show you the movements. So as I said, standard Arca Swiss plate. We've got um, safety top stop screws here. So they will be loose. They're always loose for some reason. I think in the factory they just screw them in by hand. So tighten those up when you, when you receive it if you're using this plate. What they do is when, when this is in and tightened up, Okay, it stops it from falling out in case this comes loose. So if this happened to come loose, your tripod, uh, sorry, your, your um, camera can't just fall out because it stops on these screws. It's quite an ingenious idea and a lot of, lot of these heads incorporate that. So to get your camera in and out, you don't slide it in from the side. You know, some, some release plates you slide in. This one you need to drop in, which I prefer and it's, I think it's a, Better way of doing it once you get used to it. You know, you drop it in from here and then you tighten it up. Now it's also on a it's on a screw, which I really prefer screw types to lever types. I've had a couple of lever types and they just get awkward and a bit difficult to use sometimes. So nice easy locking mechanism there. Okay, that's the top plate. Let's just take that off. Let me show you the movements on this guy. Okay, so um, just let, straighten all of this up. So let's start with the panning. So we've actually got two panning movements on this top and bottom. The top one I'll show you when I go through the, the pano um, side of things. But basically the bottom one you've just got, it's not on a gear, okay? You've got this little lever. So you just undo that and then it'll nicely just pan around, okay? Um, that's also on a spring, it's on a spring, so you can actually position that to wherever you want. If it did happen to hit something, then you can just move it out of the way to wherever you want. I don't think you, you need panning on the bottom part. This Manfrotto one, um, it panned on the bottom, and it was good, but you just, as I said, you really don't need it, and by getting rid of that, you're then just down to two, to two knobs, so it's less confusing. I remember when I first got those, you're thinking, which one does what? And you're always adjusting the wrong, wrong one. So that's quite simple, just pan on the bottom. Okay, let me show you the movements on this. So um, with this top one, we've got 40 degrees each way, okay? And then on the fore and aft, which is this one at the back, We've actually got 180 degrees, so we've got 90 degrees down, 90 degrees back. Now, if you want to make a big movement, say if you wanted to shoot a, a portrait scene and you, you don't have an L bracket, so an L bracket you just clip in that way, but we've got to drop this all the way over. So on the previous model and on the Manfrotto, what you do is you, you undo um, another lever and it makes a big movement and then you will lock it off and then do your fine movement. But they changed this and they put these, these um, little handles on. So now what you do is you just pull the handle out and you just wind it down. Okay, so as you can see, we've come down there. And at first when I saw this, I thought, oh, that's gonna be a bit of a pain. Like, you know, it's nice to be able to unlock it and just make that big movement and then lock it. 
But in reality, this is actually really quick. As you can see, it's not taking me very long to come up and do that. And I think this is a really good move because by eliminating these other knobs, we're just simplifying it a hell of a lot. We've now only really got these two here, the panning ones at the bottom is pretty obvious, and it's not gonna take very long um, once you start using this to, to know which one does what, okay? So I really love the handles, I think they're just brilliant. Now the gearing on this is absolutely beautiful. It really, really is. It's just so smooth and, and just so easy to use. It's also very consistent, like you don't get to a point where it tightens up or loosens off. It's very, very smooth, which is what you want. Um, if you happen to have a bit of arthritis and you have trouble you know, um, doing little things with stuff, then you may find that this is a nice addition too. You may use that all the time to actually, you know, make your adjustments. So I really like these little handles that they've incorporated in here. I think it's a brilliant, brilliant idea. Okay, that's our two movements, really easy to use. Let me tell you about this little pano head on the top because this is pretty neat. So if we're shooting panos, what we need to do is um, we take our camera off and we set, we've got a, we've got a little level bubble in the top here. So we would roughly level it. And would you believe that's actually dead level? Okay, so you level that, you put your camera on. Um, so you sit your camera on here into your vertical mode to shoot your panos. I'll take that off just so it's not in the way. Um, and then once it's on, you may wanna just, you know, you may wanna come up or down a little bit to get your horizon where you want it. But you roughly set that. And then what you do is you undo this guy and then you pan through your shot from the top, okay? Absolutely brilliant. And because you've leveled it off, like I'm panning through there, and that is staying absolutely dead level. Even if it, even if you've set your composition as you pan through, it's not quite level, um, you can just make your, you know, your level adjustment on here. I normally leave the level line up on the camera when I'm doing that, and as it pans through, I just make sure that that's staying level. If it's not, I just make that little adjustment um, and bang, away you go. Try and do that on, on a ball head. Yeah, good luck. Okay, um, I'll just put the camera on here and I'll just show you something too. I'll just put it on this way. But so if you wanted, so if you didn't want to pan at the bottom, you just wanted to pan at the top. You see how that's hitting on there? So um, what you can actually do is this is the same as the bottom one. It's on a, it's on one of those little levers where you're, you're spring loaded where you just pull it out, you lock it to wherever you want, and then you can lock it off. Um, that I reckon is about it. I can't think of anything else to tell you. If I've forgotten anything, just hit me up with a comment below. Uh, I hope you've liked this review, hope it's been useful. Um, look, I can't speak highly enough of this geared head. Um, the Sunway Photo GH Pro 2, absolutely thumbs up from me, love it, um, and hope you guys do too. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time. See ya.